and now every Tuesday and Thursday, our man Tim Ord from the Ord Oracle comes on, and uh, I mean, it goes without saying, if you've listened to these interviews before, uh, that he's an expert technician, and we love having him on. He did some great calls for the market, great calls uh, with the metals as well. Tim Ord, how are you doing today? Good, good. Thanks for having me on again. So uh, Absolutely. Uh, should we get started? Oh, I think we should. Let me pull up chart one right here. All right, chart one. This is kind of defined kind of where we are as chart goes back to uh, well, late 2022. And anyhow, the bottom window is the... Uh, Five day, uh, five day average of the trend. Next window up uh, is a ten day average of the trend. On uh, a five day, when the trend's um, one point uh, one point three five or higher, it's bullish. On uh, a ten day trend, one point two. And reason, uh, anyhow, a trend reading anything above on a closing basis of one point two shows there's panic in the market. And panic only forms at one place, and that's at bottoms. So I use a trend, you heard this story before, but I use a trend to show where panic arises. Yes. And so the more days of panic you get, the more worthwhile that bottom is. And so the five days is basically one week of panic readings. Uh, they're pretty high, 1.35. And on 10 days, it's actually two weeks of panic. So you got a, quite a bit of panic for a period of time. So I also look at 21-day uh, trend readings and, and so on, but the 5 and 10-day are probably the most important, and they pick out worthwhile bottoms that may last uh, a month, maybe two. Uh, and anyhow, all that shaded area across that chart are times when the 5-day and 10-day trend both reach bullish territory. And I don't have the date there. The last uh, date I had was uh, April 17th, when both trends reach bullish levels, that's right going into that um, uh, April bottom. And the last time we got these trend readings was on June 17th. Now, the market hadn't done anything yet, but it really puts a floor on the market. So we really haven't pulled back a lot, or at, pretty much not at all since June 17th. As a matter of fact, probably up a little bit. But... Um, up, I hear the music. Yeah, sorry, Tim. I was yapping for a little bit this segment before I, I got you on. Stay right there, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYJUNE24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shu filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is the Tom O'Brien Show. Uh, we are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, Tim, we were just looking at chart one, talking about the trend. Uh, I didn't. I, we got cut the break a little bit, so I didn't know if you had anything else you wanted to close with on chart one before we move on. No, I, I think that's kind of it. it kind of shows you that the market's not really set up for a, a decline here, according to the five and ten day trend. Okay. So let's uh, on chart two. Let's look at the shorter term pictures. Show what's going on. And, Absolutely, uh, we got it up. Uh, sometimes, you know, the five and ten day doesn't really give you a good view of what's really going on in the market. But anyhow, on this chart, this is a daily um, SPY, SPY. And over the last, uh, looks like about mid-June, uh, the trend started to get up above one point. Or actually, they got a 1.9 in there a couple of different times. But anyhow, it's close enough to 1.2. It, it, it created, once you... Once the trend starts getting above the range of 1.2, it shows panic in that region. And so normally you don't get declines uh, from that level. They usually stay in that level, if not go higher. And if you notice, you're kind of building a base there, uh, the pink area I kind of shaded in, where all the trend readings were at 1.2 or higher, actually 1.1 or 1.19 and higher. And it comes in around you know, 540-ish to 545-ish in that range. So this is an area of support. Uh, so, again, panic only forms at bottoms, and we got panic, even though we're setting at a high here, we got panic right in this level. So declines are probably not lightly from here. We're also ending into a, a seasonality period that's really bullish. Uh, uh, it's one of the bullish period. Uh, periods of the year that's around the july 4th time frame doesn't it's not a perfect uh seasonality date wise sometimes they start the week before july 4th sometimes they start the week after mm -hmm. july 4th the rally does but july 4th is a week from today so uh the market i according to the trend readings here is probably building a base for the next rally higher so that's what the trend's kind of saying here um let's go to chart chart three all right, getting over here. Okay, I'm going to resize that. We are good to go. All right. And anyhow, the, the bottom window is the SBUX uh, VIX ratio. And normally, the, the going into a top, actually, the VIX starts to rise. 
and this ratio helps define what's going on. So if the S&Ps are kind of making higher highs and this ratio is making lower highs, then uh, that shows actually the VIX is starting to go up. And VIX is still relatively low right now, but uh, this chart goes back to uh, 2016, and the bottom window shows where the VIX was going down at the pink levels, and the S&Ps were still going up. And if you notice, those are all uh, actually intermediate term type tops. And right now, we've got the VIX making, or the SPX VIX ratio making higher highs, and we got the SPX making higher highs. So intermediate term wise, it still looks good here. Um, a lot of times the monthly charts, this is a monthly chart, will show the divergence. And I, I think we're probably going to have a high in July, so that divergence may show up later this month, at least start to show up, but we'll have to wait and see. But the second window up is a VIX, it's a monthly VIX close. And normally a VIX below 17, we're coming in around the 12 level right now, 12 to 13 level. And that's usually not where intermediate term highs form at. That VIX starts to get into the 17 level and higher. And that's time to worry that the market's probably going to a high. So, you know, July, I think, looks good, at least into mid-month and not late month. But uh, I think some bearish divergence is going to start showing up. But as of right now, they haven't showed up. So if you're long, in my opinion, you stay long right now. And I think there could be a decent rally coming uh, in July. Uh, could it be strong? It could. Uh, it's kind of, I think, setting up for it. Uh, probably surprised most people, even though uh, summer is not the best rallies uh, going forward, but a lot of them are pretty good. And I think this one could be pretty good, so we'll have to wait yeah. and see. But uh, right now, on a short-term, intermediate-term basis, uh, I guess for the next basically around 30 days, it looks it looks pretty good. So, anyhow, that's my assessment of, of what the market's going to do between now and, and mid uh, to late July. So, Fantastic, uh, yeah. We can, we can flip the gold market. Well, let me ask you, too, before we go to that, what which okay. what would you be looking at to, to find or determine there is some bearish divergence? So what, what is diverging um, that's going to give you maybe like a bearish indication? So say, you know, we hit mid-July and we start getting whatever indicator you're talking about. What would you be looking at, roughly? Well, actually, uh, I don't have this chart shown, but okay. the, the, week, the weekly VIX, uh, SPX-VIX ratio uh, on the weekly time frame is starting to diverge here. Uh, so that's, that's kind of a warning sign, but it hasn't really showed up on the monthly chart yet. The monthly charts really are the ones you want to pay attention to. Okay. Uh, so so that kind of tells me maybe August is not going to be the, uh, the best month or something or so. But uh, there, uh, if I knew that you were going to ask that question, I would have put the uh, weekly VIX up because it's, oh, yeah. uh, it's making, uh, even though the SPs are making higher highs, that VIX ratio is making lower highs. I see. And uh, okay. it's not as accurate as the monthlies, but still a lot of times you got to pay attention to it. So that's one divergence that was not shown on this chart, but that's one I would uh, kind of monitor, which I am. So if it gets worse, I'll be bringing it up on our shows here. But right now, it's it's uh, it's not a bad situation because the monthly's not showing anything yet. So, but that's one of them. And also, a lot of times the uh, trend really gets low, really low. Like uh, the five day will get down to like point six or something like that, mm -hmm. and that shows too much exuberance. And that hasn't happened yet either. So uh, you get too much exuberance in the market. Uh, a lot of times you, you'll get a slap in the face. Absolutely, you get so, that pullback coming for that. Fantastic, yeah. right on. So, so um, well, we can so move we to chart. To chart yeah. forward. Do we got time or? Abs uh, give me a second here to check my clock. Yeah, we got about a minute until break, so we can kind of maybe crack into this a little bit before we go to the break and finish it up after that. Okay, uh, chart four uh, is the uh, is, is the daily GDX. That's the top window, and I think. Just to briefly uh, talk about that a little bit, in my opinion, there's a head and shoulders bottom forming, which you can see I diagram there, and we're, we broke through the neckline. I don't have the volume on that, but we did have a sign of strength through the neckline, and we pulled back to the neckline here over the last several days, and I think our neckline is going to find support, which is depends how you draw your trend line, comes in around 34-ish. Yeah. So I, I think we're at support on GDX right now.
Awesome. Yeah, let's finish this when we get back from the break, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle in just a moment. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are joined uh, with by Tim Ord of the OrdOracle.com. Uh, we are looking at the GDX advanced decline. Uh, I was taking a look, Tim, on the break as well. You know, I know this isn't the GDX, but looking at the gold futures. And, you know, we kind of had a consolidation period, and it seems like we broke a little bit to the downside. We tested that last day with any significant volume, which would have been April 12th, and we're kind of trading below that right now. But I'm interested to see what you're looking at, at least regarding uh, the, the gold miners. Uh, I mean, GDX? With the GDX, like just what we were talking about before the break with the GDX charts. Oh, GDX charts. I'm thinking we're, we're uh, at su support here, according. Yeah. Uh, I'm not looking at gold because I'm more interested in the, the gold stocks. Gold, yeah. I think, in a bull market is actually running ahead of the gold stocks right now. I think that's going to change over the next year. And we can cover that another time. But looking at GDX, uh, but, you know, I think we're at, a, again, a, a head and shoulders bottom. We rallied through the neckline. We're back at the neckline right now uh, over the last couple of days, which is around that 34 range. And the reason why I think that 34 range is going to hold is because of the bottom window. And the bottom window is a 50-day average of the uh, up-down volume. For some reason, this indicator works pretty well for GDX, even better than the uh, next window up, which is the advanced decline for GDX on a 50-day average, but both of them right now are above zero. When they're both above zero, the uptrend's intact. When they drop below zero, that's usually when you get the consolidations going. And I shaded in blue all the times it's been above uh, zero, and we're, and we're actually higher today than yesterday, even though GDX, well, actually GDX is up over a percent, I see, but um, it's, it's still in a strong position. If we're rallying and this indicator drops below zero, it's when you can get uh, in trouble. So everything looks fine. So let's flip to chart two and kind of actually look at a, a, a little bit shorter term picture of, of what's kind of where the strength really lies. Let's go to chart five. Absolutely. Give me one moment. We have it up. All right, chart five. Uh, now, if this is a weekly chart, but this chart is a, it's a little bit different. I, the, the previous chart was the 50-day average, the up-down volume, and the 50-day average of the advanced decline. These, uh, the second window up from the bottom is a, cum a cumulative advanced decline, and uh, or actually a, it's cumulative up-down volume. The next higher window is a cumulative advanced decline. So it's a little bit different picture you're getting on a cumulative basis, but it still works. It kind of shows you a little bit different pictures. But this, but why I like this chart, if you flip far to the right window, I guess red square there. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, top window is GDX. And over the last month, month and a half, because uh, this is the weekly chart, GDX has basically been consolidating. Right. And both those indicators is actually making higher highs. Both the advanced decline and up, down, volume, cumulative, and making higher highs. That's not what tops are made of. Uh, so this is uh, an indicator telling you this maxi market is getting stronger on a, on a weekly time frame. So that's the reason why I think this pattern that's forming on GDX is actually head and shoulders bottom, with, uh, which does have an upside target, I think, around 45-ish. Uh, so that's about a good 10 points higher than where yeah. we are. And this indicator uh, says that we're not topping here at all. This is a, a consolidation and an uptrend because both those indicators, advanced decline and up-down volume, are still actually going up even though GDX has actually gone down. Uh, so what's to come? I don't know. I think it's another impulse wave higher. That's going to look similar from the previous uh, bottom up to the previous high. I think uh, the previous bottom was around 23 or something on GDX, went to 37. Thereabouts, I can't remember the exact. Maybe twenty five. Uh, yeah, I think twenty five sixty seven was the bottom. The what? I was just saying that you were saying the bottom around twenty three. I think it's around twenty five. But anyways, yeah, I was just putting it in. Yeah, uh, twenty five, and I think the top was thirty seven. So yeah. I think this sideways consolidation or this pullback that we had since thirty seven highs down to current levels is the midpoint of the next move higher. 
That's I what see. I'm thinking. So we got another 12 points to go, which you do the numbers, you come out with about 45 again, which is basically the projection of the head and shoulders t- uh, top. So uh, when will it start? You know, a lot of times there's July uh, and, and July seasonality-wise for gold. Either that's a high or low for gold. I think this time it's going to be a low, and a lot of times an October high. So I, I think for the next three months, I think in general this market's going to rally, rally higher. And uh, we can actually look at the bigger picture uh, for gold, again, on chart six. Pulling it up right now. Got it up? Uh, this is this is kind of the uh, dominant chart. This is a monthly chart. We've shown this chart before. This chart actually triggered a long-term buy signal back on the May 31st close. You have to wait for the close of the month to really get the signal going. And as long as uh, this chart remains above the mid Bollinger Bands, which is the bottom one of the up down volume on the is the cumulative up down volume on the monthly time frame, to get the buy signal, you have to close above the mid Bollinger Band, which it did on May 31st. Next higher window is a cumulative advanced decline, which the same thing, you have to close above mid Bollinger Band, which it did. Once these signals are triggered, they usually very seldom whip around. They don't go above that bullet your band or fall back down. It's kind of a momentum indicator for the advanced decline and up down volume. So once you get momentum on a monthly time frame going in a direction, it stays in that direction for months and sometimes years. Uh, so we got the signal back on May 31st. So at least at a minimum, it's a multi month buy signal. And so the bigger as long as the bigger trends up, all the smaller trends will follow suit eventually. Uh, so we got support at 34, which is the top one of those GDX. We got the previous chart saying you got a bullish divergence going on. So I'm thinking a strong part of the rally is actually still right in front of us. I bet it starts probably in July sometime, and it may end in October just because of the seasonality periods. But I think uh, so. You got well all of July, so it's what three months. Uh, so you got a. Oh, a 12 point rally from, yeah. So that's about a 33% move or thereabouts uh, between now and then. So, you know, we'll be talking in October and I'll be saying, yeah, we reached our target of 45. <laughs> yeah. So I won't put that in gold, but there's a lot of, a lot of um, analysis, I guess you might say, that projects that move to be that, to that level, uh, probably in that time frame. So. We'll see if that works out or not, but it looks pretty good. And it, there's a lot of, you know, there's, there's sentiment wise, there's not really a lot of people talking about the gold market. So, but right. I think October you probably will, and that'd yeah. be the time where the next high may may happen. Not a significant high, but some sort of worthwhile high. Definitely, so. yeah. And, and Tim, listen, I'm going to be on next Tuesday as well, and I, you're talking a little bit, uh, maybe like last segment or something like that. But talking about how the miners usually kind of lag behind the spot price, I would love to hear some more about that. And I think others would, too. Thank you so much for joining us, Tim. This was fantastic, as always. We'll do that. Right.